Right, hello. I uh, thought I'd give you a bit of a walk around uh, some of my more interesting cars. So we'll start with this one as I've had it the longest. This is a, uh, a 1977 S Reg Triumph Dolomite 1300. Uh, this car was registered in Coventry originally and the first owner kept it for over 30 years. Uh, then it went through several owners and then on to me about five years ago. Uh, it's quite uh, quite tidy overall. Uh, I'd say rusty in the usual dolomite places, rear arches, wind tips, uh, every other piece of conceivable metalwork. Um, when I bought it at an indicated 24,000 miles on the clock, uh, which I suspect is probably 124, as there's no history of the car from the first owner. Sadly, that was all lost, so uh, uh, I can only sort of go on what information I've got. Certainly, all of the previous owners I've spoken to said that it was low mileage when they got it as well, so uh, it's conceivable that it has uh, gone round the clock. Uh, so yeah, Dolomite 1300, the Dolomite being the last small saloon uh, built by Triumph that was designed in-house. Uh, the replacement was the Triumph Acclaim, which was a license-built Honda. Uh, so the midsection of this car, sort of, from the front to the rear bulkheads, is all mid-60s design, uh, carried over from the Triumph 1300 of uh, the mid-1960s. The front end is the same as the Triumph Toledo, bar a few minor trim differences, uh, with the, uh, the double square headlights instead of the other higher spec Dolomites quad round units. Uh, you only got these square lights on the, the base model 1300 and 1500s. Uh, on these you also get no vinyl on the C pillars and steel wheels with plain hubcaps. Moving on to the back, this is uh, very much similar to the, the Dolomite, the Triumph 1500. Um, this has the same trim as the 1500 in that uh, this chrome trim here uh, doesn't wrap around and go along the back of the bumper, it just sort of ends, this in particular ends quite badly because it's dinged. Uh, and also the rear panel on higher spec cars was painted satin black, whereas on these low spec cars it was body coloured. Uh, this car still has its uh, original badges and its original uh, raised digit number plates, which I quite like. Um, interesting, these have a slightly different font to the reproduction plates that you can get nowadays. This is uh, the Gothic font, which you also got on black and white plates. But uh, the new ones, the new repo ones, seem to have a different font on them. Uh, so I'll have a quick look at the interior. Uh, it's a bit of a mess. I make no apologies. It is a working vehicle after all. Uh, so on a 1300 you get vinyl seats, vinyl door cards, uh, all fairly basic. The flat plank dash, no curved dash in these. Fairly basic instrumentation. You've got the speedometer, no rev counter, just a combined temperature and fuel gauge. You do get a heated rear window hazard light flashers uh, and on this as well headrests. Interestingly the Acclaim that replaced this, the base spec Acclaim, doesn't have headrests so this is actually slightly better equipped in a way. Uh, these sort of eyeball ventilation fresh air vents, no heat comes out of those, only, uh, only cold air. There's no centre uh, heater vent as there is on uh, 
the high spec cars. Uh, your only ventilation in the cabin comes from down here in the footwells. Uh, my beautiful fake radio. Uh, glove box. Complete with uh, Giffertastic cup holders added at some point. Very nice touch. Uh, screen ventilation up here. Uh, this would have had a dipping rear view mirror line broke. I fitted this one, which I believe is from a Mini. Uh, twin sun visors, passenger gets a mirror, although in my car it's not a particularly good mirror. Uh, somebody has cut my door cards to fit speakers, which is a shame, but they do actually sound fairly good now I've wired them in properly. Uh, altogether fairly fairly basic motoring, two speed wipers, I think the, the Toledo only had single speed I think. Uh, but and of course a, uh, an ashtray in every door which is now just filled with rubbish. Bits of car that have fallen off. Uh, I'll show you in the back as well. Nothing much to see in the back. This car has uh, seat belts fitted. They're not standard. Again, more and more sort of beige brownie vinyl and uh, again, assorted rubbish but it's just sort of rolling around back in there. The power plant is Triumph's 1.3 litre uh, overhead valve, a single SU carburetor, uh, nothing really all that interesting to report in the engine department. To be honest, it develops around about 58 horsepower I believe, or it did when it was brand new, this one almost certainly doesn't. Um, but they are fairly reliable. Uh, I've wrapped my fuel line in foil to try and stop the car from stalling in hot weather. It doesn't work, still stalls in hot weather. Uh, this car also has uh, electronic ignition fitted which was a godsend because prior to that it was on its original point system or a a reproduction point system and it was just a nightmare, it never worked, the car never started uh, and it would break down all the time but other than that it's pretty much uh, pretty much bone stock, there's not really any modifications done to it either cosmetically or mechanically aside from uh, again the electronic ignition and the the fact that I painted the steel wheels black. Quite a nice, uh, quite a nice bonnet locking mechanism on these as well. Uh, I painted the steel wheels black uh, because I like the contrast with the chrome hubcaps, and I mean it's probably good for two or three horsepower, right? And uh, Halford's black should be easier to paint over when they inevitably go rusty. Uh, this car, rust in the usual Triumph places, uh, it's had replacement arches fitted at some point and they've done a really quite bad job of it and it's all rotting from the inside out. Uh, sills are all fairly good. This wingtip, pretty much done. Uh, front balance, again pretty much done. Uh, front panel, starting to hole down this side and that wing's on its way out as well. Sills, good. Door bottom on this side, bit flaky. Again, poor repairs. Uh, I had this rear bit of sill welded up and it's now completely different shape to the rest of the car, which is nice. And uh, again, another, another very finished rear arch. But uh, aside from that, it's quite a clean, uh, clean old car. Uh, the only real problem I have with it is it doesn't like starting when it's hot, which on a day like this where it's about 35 degrees, uh, yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'll probably do a, a video segment of it driving along uh, from inside if I can find a way to mount my camera up, which I think should be uh, quite entertaining, but just for now, let's see if it'll uh, 
start mechanically it's not in great shape uh, the bottom end rattles the top end knocks no sorry other way around bottom end knocks top end rattles um, and all the rest of it just sort of crashes into each other in a cacophony of mechanical noises Choke, I think. Come on. Don't want to flood it there. Oh. And that's why I have the choke out at the fast idle speed, even on a warm day like this, because otherwise I'll pull up to a set of traffic lights and it'll stall out. Uh, but when it's on the road, it's perfectly fine. Speaking of which, I shall mount the camera up and I shall attempt to take you along for a spin.